I'm here in Brimbank Park in Victoria, Australia. This place is special to me as it was one of the first places that I explored when I began to take an interest in geology. This video is about the overlapping volcanics that covered the ancient sedimentary rocks here within the past 7 million years, obscuring the original 400 million year old geography by turning a land once dominated by the rise and fall of valleys and peaks into a relatively flat volcanic plateau. When I look at the horizontal layers of rock, I can see that this area has always been one of sediment deposition. Over eons, erosion worked the host rocks of these materials down and gravity deposited and sorted the grains that were eroded based on the specific gravity of the material, transforming it into the different rock layers we see today. If I were to dig, say, 70 meters beneath these rocks, I'd hit the original vertically tilted layers of rocks that make up the real bedrock of the land which speak to the ancient subduction events and a continent-to-continent -continent collision that occurred here 400 million years ago. If these rocks were vertically tilted, instead of horizontally tilted, I'd be eagerly searching them for hard rock gold, contained within any potential hydrothermal quartz. But since they are horizontal, I know not to waste my time as there would be no outcropping quartz, only potential alluvial gold, of which this river has very little but it does exist in certain regions upstream where the river cut through the basalt to expose the aforementioned gold-enriched ancient material, allowing for it to erode and get deposited nearby. The river that I'm speaking about is called the Maribyrnong, and the Maribyrnong has cut right through the basalt and sedimentary rocks that you see here. Situated all around this area are the many volcanoes that erupted fluidic basalt within the past 7 million years, which flowed into the ancient iterations of the Maribyrnong and covered it, altering the waterways. If I was to guess, I'd say that the present day Maribyrnong is flowing alongside or at the very least near ancient iterations of it, as the thin veneers of lava that were released from nearby volcanoes did bury the land here in what appears to be under 15 to 20 meters worth of lava, compared to other waterways which experienced over 50 meters worth of lava coverage, which worked to completely reroute new rivers. But the Maribyrnong didn't experience this, and when the volcanoes erupted, they did flatten the land out and bury the original watercourses that ran through here. They release lava flows in thin veneers and these veneers have been worked through, revealing the sediments that you see here. The river has cut through the material here like a knife through butter. On the inside bend of the river, you can see the sandy deposits from past iterations of it, and during a flood, this cliff face is hammered, making it increasingly steep to the point of collapse. Basalt was erupted from everywhere, and it is the dominant rock inside the river. This basalt has enriched the ancient nutrient deficient soil that existed here, allowing for farmlands to prosper along the banks. When we learn geology, we learn to read the story that the land has for us, and it is one of the most precious treasures that this science has provided me, as I constantly find myself in reverence over what I see whenever I go to a new place, or even when I revisit old ones, there's always something new to learn. When I last came here, I didn't know what I was seeing. I didn't know that this area was one of sediment deposition for possibly hundreds of millions of years. I didn't know that all around me were the bulbous hills of relatively young volcanoes. And that's why I find this place so interesting, and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching.